G'day, this is my Ohio Scientific Superboard to Model 600 Revision B. Okay, I'm just going to power it on. Okay, and when the machine boots, uh, you just get random characters displayed. I'm going to reset the processor by just pressing break, which actually triggers a reset on the CPU. I'm going to press C, which will hold this into basic. And now it's asking us if we want to reserve any memory. And we're just going to press enter because we're not reserving any memory. And then it's asking us the terminal width. We're just going to take the default. And it's actually booted into basic. And here we only have uh, 3K installed. And we have 2,303 bytes free. Okay, we're just going to uh, press break again because someone actually told me about an Easter egg when you actually load basic. So we're going to do another cold start. This time we're going to enter A for the memory size and press enter. And here's a wonderful tribute to uh, Rick who wrote this version of basic and he was one of the very early employees at Microsoft. Okay, now we're just going to let it start normally. Now, I'm going to load a basic program at 300 board using the serial port. So we're just entering load. And on this machine, I've actually added several resistors, two transistors and a diode and cut a track. And that allows you to connect a serial port to the machine and it runs at 300 board. So what we're going to do we're going to go over to TerraTerm on my laptop and we're just going to send it a simple basic program. Okay, and as you can see, it actually displays what's being read when it's loading, which is a good way to pass the time. You can actually read the code because at 300 board, any long program will take some time to load. Also on this machine, I've added the optional DAC, which allows you to generate noise. And this is using the uh, keyboard scanning on the keyboard, which actually allows you to generate um, some interesting, if not very simple tones. Okay, so it's slowly loading away. Uh, on this machine, I've had to replace uh, several chips. Uh, I've also um, socketed all the ICs. Uh, I've had to repair some damaged tracks. This board I modified uh, in the late 70s, early 80s. Um, I think I got this machine at the end of 1979 and a few tracks have been cut and but now that's been all restored back to the original ROMs the original version of BASIC. Um, I need some more RAM chips so I can get it up to 8K. Originally, I purchased this machine with 4K and then I bought an additional 1K. So I was running 5K on the machine. Okay, what we're going to do, we're going to run up this uh, piece of code. Okay, I'm gonna hit space to exit out of load. And now we're going to hit run. Okay, one player, I think. This is a very simple little game of breakout. One player. Okay, that's better. And it actually uses some simple sound effects. Oh, and now I'm going to, okay. Every time you strike an object or return the ball, it generates a tone. I'll turn the volume up a little bit and let's see if I can do a bit better. Okay, oops, <laughs> I'm not very good at this. Here we go. Oh, get over there. Oh, now it's a bit slow because it is running in basic, but we have some basic sound effects. Oh, damn, I'm so close. And that's the end of the game. Okay, and now the keyboard's being scanned constantly, so the tone is continuous. I've just turned the volume down. I'm just using a very simple little um, amp with a speaker connected onto the noise pin. 
Okay, well that's a brief look at my Ohio Superboard. I've included a link to CL Audio's uh, page and that's where you can find a copy of the code and some other great little basic programs of the Ohio Superboard, plus some information about emulating an Ohio Superboard if you actually don't have the actual hardware. Okay, thanks for watching and we will catch you next time. Okay, have a great evening all. Bye.